Assalamualaikum, everyone. Welcome to our live session today. Today is going to be our last session for this uh, comprehensive English language development course. So today I'm going to do a brief recap of all the chapters that we have covered in this course, starting from parts of speech up to direct and indirect speeches and the chapters that we studied yesterday. All right, then. Uh, so let's get started. So we covered the nine parts of speech. We went to nouns, pronouns, articles, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, prepositions, conjunctions, and interjections. And then we went through the subject verb agreement, the present tense forms, the past tense forms, the future tense forms, conditionals, the active passive voice, direct and direct speeches uh, and model verbs. And as for here, we covered subject and predicate relative clauses and adverbial clauses. As for the rest of the chapters, which we did not cover or uh, which we didn't we really have the time to cover, if inshallah, if we conduct uh, a future course like this, uh, maybe in the near future or in the distant future on Facebook Live, then definitely I will try my best to go through these latter chapters or the chapters that we didn't or that we couldn't cover this time, uh, starting from reported clause and adjective of phrases, adverbial phrases, noun phrases, sentence structure, redundancy, reference, homonyms, phrasal verbs, capitalization, punctuation. And then also I intended to cover these chapters over here uh, under the heading of corporate English about applying your knowledge of grammar in your day-to-day -day writings, writing essays, writing effectively, proofreading effectively, improving your vocabulary, spoken English, writing flawless emails, dressing to impress, professionalism, communication, taking responsibility, promoting your organization and yourself, and dreaming big. If, however, like I am saying, if in the near future there is an opportunity for us to uh, conduct sessions on Facebook Live, inshallah, then definitely I will try my best to cover the chapters that we couldn't cover this time. All right. Anyway, but happy to have covered all the chapters that I could. Alhamdulillah. I hope all of you or most of you who have uh, so ardently and diligently participated in these sessions uh, could learn at least a little bit from these sessions. Or although the entire uh, the actual intention or motivation behind this entire course was not to really teach English to you entirely because that was just not possible under the time frame. Uh, but the idea or the motivation was to inspire you to learn English better, to look into, uh, you know, the intricacies of English, right? So you can act actually, uh, you know, to, to tempt you to studying English and uh, taking this particular mode of communication seriously. As you know, that English is extremely important, a medium of communication in this 21st century. And there is really not uh, a discipline of career or a discipline of study where you will not need this. So I hope I could deliver this message to you loud and clear. And I hope you will definitely, inshallah, get inspired and eventually uh, take the language uh, more seriously if you haven't already. All right. Okay, then, I've got some greetings here. Tasnia Rabi is saying, Assalamu alaikum, sir, how are you? Wa alaikum assalam, Tasnia, I'm fine, alhamdulillah, thank you for asking. Let me know how you are doing. Ninza Muni is saying, Assalamu alaikum, sir, how are you? I'm fine, thank you so much, Ninza. Wa alaikum assalam, and let me know how you are doing. We have Israat Johan Zarin uh, saying, Assalamu alaikum, sir. How are you doing? Well, I'm great. Alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking. Israel, how are you doing? Dustin, Assalamu alaikum, sir. How are you? Well, I'm fine. Alhamdulillah. How are you, Dustin? I hope all of you are doing great. Okay. And then we have Ninja saying, feeling sad. I will miss your class too much. Well, yes, uh, I will be missing all of you as well. 
as much as you're going to miss me because uh, this journey has been amazing for me, alhamdulillah. And uh, I was not only in the, uh, I, I was, it, it, uh, you were not only, I mean, all of you were not only on the receiving end of, of, uh, of this entire course. I myself have received and learned so much in the process of uh, conducting this entire course. M many of my uh, confusions that I had previously, or I had had previously, uh, have been, uh, you know, cleared, alhamdulillah, in the process of actually teaching or training you. All right? So I'm going to miss this as well, but I'm sure we will, uh, this is not the end of it, and definitely we will, inshallah, meet again and, uh, you know, maybe someday we will come to work together, inshallah, at Automatics, uh, if, uh, if Allah wills. So until that day, what I need you to do is keep learning. Uh, I want you to keep learning English and keep uh, exposing or keep, uh, ex uh, you know, keep looking for more opportunities to grow yourself or to make yourself better uh, each passing day. The target should be to get better or to do better tomorrow than you have done today. And always remember that there is no competition in this world. You don't have to compete with anyone else. Okay? This is a, a misconception and this is uh, a very misunderstood or a very uh, derogatory system we have we have in, in, in us that uh, we, we naturally have this instinct to compete with others, right? The competition should only be with yourself. So if you can do this much today, your target should, your target should be to do more than this tomorrow. Always keep checking yourself. Keep yourself in check and balance. Do not, compete, do not compare your situation with anyone else's, right? You don't know what that person might be going through. You know your things. You know your own details. So take your life seriously. And if you ever come across a person who may be speaking English so well, well, you have a lot to learn from him or her, maybe. But don't ever feel bad that you may not be able to speak so English as the other person does. Or, or if there is any other person who comes across you and you see that person's English is not as good as yours, try to reach out to that person for help if, of course, if the person asks for your help. Okay? So try, let's, let us try to help each other in the process and let us try to make each other better, but, not, but let us not compete with each other in, a, in any negative way or let us not compare our lives with, uh, or let us, let us not have this, this comparison between ourselves because I've never really liked it and this brings us nothing but uh, just disappointment, right? because we can never be happy uh, with what we have if we always keep competing or if we always keep comparing ourselves to what others have, okay? All right, so a lot of uh, philosophies, pardon for that. Let's uh, get going. Tasnia Ruby is here saying, I'm listening to you, sir. I'm gonna miss your class on vacation. Well, yes, uh, glad to know that you will miss me. I will miss all of you as well. Saladun Rana is here. Assalamu alaikum, sir, good evening. Walaikum assalam and good evening to you too, Salahuddin. I'm uh, glad to have you here. Okay, so let's have this recap now. So what are nouns? Nouns are names of people, places, animals, things, or ideas. Basically, any name is a noun. Some examples of nouns are President Trump, Bangladesh, cats, uh, laptops, love, etc. Okay, I've got some question. I've, I've got this question here from Dustin saying, how to overcome the awkwardness of speaking on Converse in English. All right, this actually reminds me that uh, if any of you have any questions regarding uh, how to get better at English, maybe this is the time. So keep posting your questions here. I'll try to answer as many as possible, inshallah. Starting with Dustin's question over here, how to overcome the awkwardness of speaking or conversing in English. Well, uh, what you could possibly be doing is that you need to know, wait, let me tell you this. Do we know why we, do you know why we feel uh, awkward or why we feel so shy doing something that we, that we may not be so, uh, uh, that uh, we may not be so good at doing that? That is particularly because we always fear getting judged by others, right? We think people will always judge us. 
we think that, uh, you know, if I say something wrong, maybe I'll get judged. Maybe that person will not think so highly of me. But that is so wrong. That is so wrong. You should really should not care. You just should not care. That person may judge you. That person may not judge you. But it does you no good. It does you no bad either. You have to do what you have to do, right? So if you have to say something in English, just do it anyway. Just do it anyway. Don't bother if your English is incorrect, if your grammar is not so smooth, if your if your accent is not that good, if your way of speaking or your fluency is not so polished. It really doesn't matter. It, it should only matter to you, and that's it. If you think you're not so good at it, keep improving at it. Work on it. But don't don't fear what uh, thinking that what the other person might be thinking of you. It really doesn't matter. What really matters is that you have put your effort into this. You have uh, put up the courage to do something that matters, and that is speaking in English, right? So don't think if the other person is judging. So for example, just uh, I'll share my own experience. Like right now, I'm speaking in English with all of you. I'm trying to deliver this or conduct this entire session in English, right? And as I'm doing so, do you know how much, uh, how much fear of getting judged I have? A lot, of course. It's because I could be thinking, well, maybe the grammar of the sentence that I just said may not have been right, right? Maybe I could have used a better vocab, better, better word to express my thought. Maybe I said something wrong grammatically. And I have this fear so much. You know why? Because I think, me being an English language trainer, my English should be really good or should be flawless. But let me assure you or let me enlighten you. No human being is above flaws. We just can't avoid it. No matter how good you are at something, think about Lionel Messi or think about Cristiano Ronaldo. Do they really score goals every time they play? Of course not. It's just not humanly possible. It's just not humanly possible. You see? So really don't bother. Just do what you have to do. And if you think you're good at something, keep polishing yourself. Keep, keep doing things that will just make you even better at that. Okay, I have a lot of fear. I think people will judge me. But then again, even if I do think so, I let my confidence overcome that fear. I really do. I really push myself to overcome uh, the fear of getting judged. So at the end of the day, I may accomplish certain things. I may not. But then again, I do try to do what I have to do. Okay, so don't feel awkward. Or even if you do, try to overcome that awkwardness with your confidence thinking that the people around you, what they are thinking really doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. What they're thinking doesn't matter. What matters is if you are doing what you should be doing. So keep doing your, uh, keep doing what you have to do anyway. Don't really bother much about what others think. Okay. If you have to speak in English, just go on. All right. Okay. Um, I have this, uh, another question from Ninza. I want to practice English daily with model tests. Can you suggest any mobile application for attending test exam and that application will show correct answer with enough uh, explanation? Well, I'm really sorry, but uh, there are many applications as such on the internet, but none in particular is ringing, my, is ringing the bell in my head right now. So uh, really sorry for that, but yes. The kind of applications uh, or the kind of uh, software or apps that you're looking for uh, is very much available on the internet. So please uh, do look up uh, or do look into such applications on uh, on Google, right? I'm sure you will come across many, okay? All right. Sultan al Arafat is saying, advanced Ibn Barak to you. May Allah accept the good deeds of yours and ours. Amin, 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 and advanced Ibn Barak to you too, Sultan. Uh, great to hear from you. Shah Sarafat Afrid is here saying, Assalamu alaikum, sir, joining from Kagra Chari. Did you come to Kagra Chari in time? Very beautiful place. I'm inviting you to come, sir. Oh, thank you so much, Afridi, for this wonderful invitation. Yes, Kagra Chari is amazing and I've heard about it, but no, I still haven't had a chance to visit Kagra Chari. But yes, thank you for this invitation of yours. Uh, this is now actually intriguing me to uh, visit Kagra Chari. Uh, and I think, I hope, inshallah, I'll come to Kagra Chari someday soon, inshallah. Right? Okay. Uh, Dasni Arabi is here saying, Sir, can I contact you on FB or ID? Others I need to talk. Can I, sir? Well, uh, 
Well, I, I don't think we do have this uh, particular medium of communicating, but if you have anything to say, right, uh, you could do so. Just let me know here. Uh, just just, com just make your comments, right, and I'll try to reach out to you as fast as I can, inshallah. Okay? All right, Dustin Bush, I say, I really admire your accent, sir. Definitely going to try to speak the way you do, and thank you for your advice. Most welcome, Dustin. And thank you for admiring the accent that I have. But let me tell you, the the, uh, the way I speak really does not belong to any particular category of accent. Many people confuse my accent uh, and think that I'm actually, uh, uh, think of my accent as, 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 uh, as if I'm, I'm speaking in British, but of course not. This is nowhere near the British accent. That's because mine is just maybe a mixture of, of, of uh, colloquial English, of some British uh, pronunciations and some American pronunciations, right? But mine is not a perfect accent. But then again, yes. Can we attain a perfect accent? Maybe, I would say maybe, but but once again, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Think about, or consider Indians, right? Indians speak in English so fluently. And more often than not, you will not find them committing any grammatical errors while they speak. But think about their accent. Is their accent British or American or maybe a mixture? Of course not. They have built their own accent, the Indian accent, right? It may not so it may not sound nice to many, but then again, it's just perfect. It's okay, it's good. As long as you're delivering your message uh, correctly, grammatically correctly, it really doesn't matter which accent you're. Uh, saying it in. But yes, pronunciations are important and you should make sure that you're actually pronouncing a word in the way it's supposed to be pronounced. Okay? All right. Ms. Bhavdinamad is here saying, during conversation in English, I do not find appropriate words to complete the sentence. Sometimes I found the word after finishing the conversation. Is there any mantra to overcome this problem? The only mantra that has always been here and that has always been universally true is to practice. You see, practice makes a man perfect. The more you practice speaking in English, the better you will get at it. And this happens to every person, even to native English speakers, you know, losing words and not, uh, not really uh, remembering the appropriate word for the appropriate case. Just think about yourself and, uh, and think when you speak in Bangla, or when we speak in Bangla, do we always say the correct uh, Bangla words when we, when we converse in Bangla? Of course not. It's just not possible. But that's okay. That's fine. Just keep practicing English. And if you want to improve your vocabulary, then definitely you should be um, looking into, you know, all the uh, words or many words or just, you know, keep learning uh, or keep improving your English vocabulary. And there are many mediums of doing so. You can learn them from the internet, you can buy so many books that there are available that are available on the market, and just buy books and uh, read if you want to learn English words and use them better. Okay. All right. The same answer is for you, Isra uh, Jahan Zarin. If you want to make your vocabulary rich, if you want to get better, or if you want to make your vocabulary better, then definitely what you have to do is just uh, keep reading and uh, learn, just try to learn one word every day, if possible. It's not really possible. It's not easy, sorry. It is possible. It's not easy to learn one word and remember it and use it uh, and to do it continuously every single day. It may not be so easy, but it is possible. But start slow or start easy. Say, for example, you could give yourself uh, certain targets, such as, uh, let's just say that you target to learn at least Two English, two new English words this week, this ongoing week, right? So look up two new English words, maybe two verbs or two nouns or two adjectives. Look them up and uh, learn them by heart. Learn how exactly or under which circumstances should you be using those, uh, uh, those two words. And then going forward, try to use those words as many times as possible while you converse, or while you speak in English, okay? So start by learning two every week and then... When you get a good hold of this practice, increase the number. Shift, move up to three, four, five, like that. Okay? All right. Tanz uh, Tanjula Afro's Aliza here is saying, Sir, I still have confusion with the use of have had in a sentence. Example, I had an argument with Tom and, Tom and I have had enough for one day. So can, can you please elaborate this term again? Thank you. Yes, of course. Uh, thank you for asking this question. This is a very good question. And 
Uh, I love answering such complicated grammatical questions, although I may not be so good at these. Anyway, I'm trying my best. Well, you see, have had is actually the present perfect tense, or it's, it's, in, it's in its present perfect form, right? To be more specific with the, with the sentence that you have provided here, I had an argument with Tom, and I have had enough for one day. You see, take a look at the first part of the sentence. I had an argument with Tom. <clears throat> Which tense is this part in? Which tense is this particular clause in? This clause is in the simple past tense, right? It's, it clearly says that you had an argument with someone. So you say, I had an argument with Tom. Now you're not having this argument any longer. You had it, it's gone, it's done, it's in the past. Okay, now take a look at the latter part of the sentence. And I have had enough for one day. You know what this implies? This implies that you had the argument today, but not any time, uh, not, not in the recent past, meaning not maybe in the last couple of hours, maybe three, four, five, six hours um, uh, earlier. Maybe you had this argument with Tom in the morning, and now maybe it's, it's the evening, right? And for this day, you have had enough. Now, why do you say have had and not had? It's because you're talking about the day that you are in. You're still in that very day, right? And that day is not over. So you're in the present. Now, for present purposes, you're actually saying that for now, I have had enough, okay? And when do we exactly speak in the present perfect tense? There are multiple occasions for choosing to speak in the present perfect tense. The first occasion is when you want to talk of something that has just recently that has just recently been finished. Okay, for example, maybe you have just completed your breakfast. It's morning and you've just completed your breakfast and say, I have had my breakfast, meaning maybe you've just completed having your breakfast. Maybe uh, uh, it's been only 10 minutes since you finished your breakfast, right? And you don't make mention of the time. You don't specifically say, I had breakfast 10 minutes ago. You don't do that. You just say, I have had my breakfast, meaning very recently you have just finished your breakfast. Connoting or, in, or uh, somehow focusing on the present tense or on the present situation or the situation that is currently ongoing, right? The, the present time factor, that is the essence here. So you say, I have had breakfast, meaning you just have had breakfast and you're full, okay? You're good, you don't want to have any, all right? Okay, so just like that, if you say, I had an argument with Tom, it means you had this argument and you had it in the past, maybe you had it today, yes, but still it's past for this particular sentence, for this particular expression of yours. For now, it's past, right? For example, I can tell you that uh, it rained today, follow this. If I tell you it rained today, do I mean it is still raining now? Is it tomorrow? Am I saying it rained yesterday? No, it rained today. But is it raining now? It's not. But it did rain in the past, maybe two, three hours ago, right? But if I tell you now, I have had enough with rain, uh, I've had enough with raining today, or I have had enough, uh, I don't want to see, or yeah, uh, I have had enough with rain today. Meaning, for now, even for this very day, which you are in, which is, in, which is the present for you, you are done or you are just, uh, you know, you're just done with rain and you don't want to have or you don't want to see uh, any more rain. You see? Have I been able to uh, explain this? If not, please. And I'll see if I can make it any better. Okay. So the next question um, is from Salahuddin Rana. So I have a query. Is there any time limit conducting the course and assessment which you are which you are given to us? I'm asking because I'm setting the advanced medical language course assessment today, 10 p.m. after live streaming that is needed to so, uh, within 11:30. This so. all right? No, no particular time uh, time frame or no particular time limit for the uh, course and assessment. Actually, I haven't really sent you a course and assessment yet. The assessment or the quiz that I sent you yesterday. Uh, that was not the course and assessment. The course and assessment will be sent to you tomorrow, inshallah. I will send, not tomorrow, sorry, but I'll actually send you the course and assessment on Friday, right? On Friday. And yes, for that particular quiz or, that for, or, or for that particular assessment, there will be a specific time limit, which I will specify, uh, which will be specified in the exam. 
or in the, in the quiz paper, the exam paper, you'll have it there. But for the last or for the, uh, for the assessment for the quiz that you received yesterday, there is no particular time limit. You can finish it uh, whenever you want to finish it. Okay. All right. Ninza Moon is here asking, how to improve listening quality in English? Okay. Well, you see, learning English, another, another uh, important way of learning English is actually exposing yourself to English as much as possible, right? Just imagine yourself being exposed to the Bangla language all the time. You speak in Bangla with your family members, you speak in Bangla with your friends, you listen to Bangla songs, we, we watch Bangla films, Bangla cinemas, and uh, we read Bangla books, and we're so good at Bangla. Why? That's because it's, we've always spoken in this language ever since our day one in this, in this world, or ever since the day we started to speak, right? We've been, we've been speaking in Bangla. Why? That's because it's our mother tongue. It's, we've always been hearing Bangla. We've always been uh, hearing Bangla, talking in Bangla. So we are just masters in Bangla, right? Are we not? Of course, yes. To an extent, we are. So how exactly can you do the same for English? Is it really possible to be reborn as an English person and then have this skill of speaking in English well? No, of course not. You're just born once. That's it. So what do you do? You need to increase your exposure to the English language. And to do that, there are many things that you could be doing. Just, you know, when you wake up in the morning, if you happen to wake up during Fajr, right? Right after you offer your Fajr prayer, uh, take some time, read some English materials on the internet. Read some, read some English literature work on the internet. Or whenever, you know, you, the, the daily newspaper gets delivered to your home, read that newspaper if it's in English, if the newspaper is in English daily, right? You could subscribe to the Daily Star, you could subscribe to uh, the Daily Observer or Dhaka Tribune, right? There are so many English newspapers available. So just subscribe to one of them and read um, the, an English newspaper every single day for at least 30, 40 minutes. At least read the most important news that there are, uh, uh, the most important news that, that uh, the, the most important pieces of news that you may find available uh, in a newspaper, right? And then of course, if you happen to travel some or travel to some place, right? While you're traveling, we're now living in a digital era where, where most of us have smartphones and uh, we have uh, internet is so accessible to, uh, to all of us and we have internet on our phone 24 seven, most of us, right? So if you happen to have internet on your phone, tune in to the BBC radio. I don't, do you need uh, internet to listen to the BBC radio if you don't have, uh, no, no, I mean like, I, I mean to ask that, is it necessary to, is it, is it, do you must need the internet to listen to tune into the radio channels? I'm not really sure though. However, the point is just tune in to the BBC radio and listen to it whenever you're traveling. Instead of listening to music, right? Instead of listening to songs, you could replace uh, listening to songs with listening to English news. And the more you listen to such English news, the better your chances of improving your listening skills. And the more you listen, the more the accents, uh, the ways of uh, talking and the grammar, they get into your head. They keep getting into your head. The more they get into your head, the more you get better at the language, right? Subconsciously, you'll just uh, find yourself speaking in English. All of a sudden, you'll find that you're doing so good. You're doing so much better than you used to do, right? So, yeah. Just uh, listen to BBC Radio whenever you can. Watch good English uh, movies, English films, read English books as many times as much as possible, and then uh, read an English newspaper every single day, at least for 30 minutes. Uh, and there are so many contents, uh, so many self-development or English development contents available on YouTube, specifically on improving your listening skills. Look them up. Just look them up. They're just clicks away. They're just uh, keys away or clicks away. Just look them up and you'll find them. Use your spare time valuably, okay? As, mu as much as you can. All right. Ms. Bogdan is, is here saying your accent sounds like the British accent. Or right, just uh, thank you though. But I believe this is just uh, half British or 
barely British, or merely British, not really British. I do try, yes, I try my best to sound as good as possible, but I don't think it's really uh, British, uh, or it's even near to being the British accent. Okay, but anyway, thank you for this wonderful remark. Uh, we have this question from Ashikur Rahman. How to improve English language skills, English, oh, sorry, English listening skills. Sometimes I don't understand fluently when I hear Native American English. That's absolutely fine if you don't understand, because we aren't supposed to understand everything that we come across. Do you always understand me? I don't think so, because I don't understand uh, everyone. You know, there are many times I listen to some person, but then again, he or she may be speaking so fast or maybe using certain words that I may not have heard before. And I don't understand that person, and that's fine. But yes, if you want to improve your listening skills, just as I said, you need to increase your exposure to the language and by availing yourself as many resources as possible, like listening to the BBC radio and uh, watching good English films, watching good English movies, reading English books, subscribing to a daily English newspaper, and what else? Yeah, talk to friends or your family members, right? Speak to them in English. I know it's, it's really not practical because people don't follow up. Uh, if you really ask your sibling or your spouse to do so, it just doesn't uh, work out so smoothly all the time because it really doesn't happen that way practically. But if you're determined, you very well can. You just can. So try it out. Try out as many ways as you can to improve your English. Okay? You could also be taking many courses that are available on the internet. There are many, so many free courses available. So take some free uh, courses. And uh, although courses may not be, if you cannot avail yourself any such free course, YouTube is the best learning platform, I think, right? So look up such contents on, on YouTube, which will offer you uh, certain uh, methods of improving your English, besides what I'm saying already, okay? All right. Uh, Dasne here is saying, can we overcome only your course to join automatics if necessary to attend medical language course also joining here? I'm really not clear. Uh, about this, I, mean, I, I really haven't understood your question. But are you trying to say that if if this the course that I'm conducting is enough to get into automatics or not? Is is that your question? Well, you see, these courses are only to help you. That's it. Uh, these courses are the language of medicine course and the English language course. Both these courses are here to inspire you to learn better, to get better at what you are already good at. So. Yes, you may not have come, come across the language of medicine before, but now is the time for you to learn uh, that, uh, uh, that to, to look into that particular subject, the language of medicine, right? If you're really serious about, about working for automatics, it is a must that we, that, you know, that you get good or that you improve why you get into the insights or get some insights uh, on the language of medicine because uh, our scribes or allied healthcare professionals, they have to have this particular skill, the skill of being well-versed in the language of medicine. That's a very important chapter, not chapter, it's a very important subject, a very important discipline. So definitely you should be seriously learning it if you're considering a career with us, right? And yes, uh, as English, uh, as for English, English is universally important. Like I keep saying, it's, an, it's not only just important for us or for working for Augmatics, but for any organization or for your own personal development purposes as well. Okay? All right. Mm. Okay. Dustin Busher has this question saying, I always find it confusing to structure a sentence start with the word if. Can you please help me with that? Okay, so whenever you start a sentence with if, the what is the purpose of it? Why would you do so? You do so when you have to make a contrast or when you have to make it conditional somehow, right? For example, if this happens, maybe that will happen, right? Remember conditionals? We learned, we discussed conditionals uh, uh, in this course. So if you start a sentence with the word, with the uh, subordinate conjunction, if, 
what does it make? It actually makes sure, it makes the clause a subordinate clause, right? Or, or a dependent clause. The subordinating conjunction makes the clause a dependent clause. So you only say so when you have a condition hinging on it or hanging upon it. So for example, uh, you can say that if I learn one English word every day, Follow this. If I learn one English word every day, comma, if you're writing it, and no need of comma, of course, if you're not writing it, but what's important is to take a pause, to take a break right after you've said your if clause. So if I learn one English word every day, I will definitely become better at English. My vocabulary or my vocabulary, uh, my English vocabulary will definitely get enriched. You follow? So there you go. So the if clause, if you put it at first, then of course you need to take a break right after, or you need to give it a pause, give a pause right after you've finished saying your if clause before you say your, uh, uh, before you say the main clause, right? Or the independent clause, such as if I do this, that will happen. But on the other hand, if you come up with the main clause at first, yeah, or the independent clause at first, then you don't have to give a pause after your independent clause or main clause, or you don't have to put a comma after your main clause right before your if clause, such as my English vocabulary will definitely get, get and sorry, my English, uh, my English vocabulary will definitely get enriched if I learn one word every single day. You see, I haven't taken any pause here, but if I were to go with if at first, if I were to go with if clause at first, then I would have definitely taken a pause, such as uh, if I learn an English word every single day, pause. My English will definitely get better. And the if clause for such, uh, uh, when, you, when, you, when you want to talk about uh, situations using the first conditional, right? Then definitely the if clause must be in the simple present tense. If I do this, if that happens, yeah, in the simple present tense, okay? All right, and in the and the following clause must be the main clause must be in the uh, simple future tense, such as if I do this, if I learn an English word every single day, my English will become better. My vocabulary of my English vocabulary, my English vocabulary will get enriched. You see, so there is will get, which is again in the simple future tense. Okay, all right. Danjula for Zalisa saying, "I get it, sir. Thank you for explaining. Most welcome. Uh, thank you." Okay. Today we will attend course and assessments. Which mark will be considered to select only course and assessment or total score around this language course session? So, no, you will be uh, assessed individually, of course. I mean, like you will get your scores, uh, you know, take, take it. If you take the uh, English, English test, then of course you will have your English test scores and the, the LOM course or the language of medicine test will be judged separately. Uh, and both really, both will be taken into consideration, of course. So both are equally important. So I suggest you take both of them seriously. Okay, all right. Ms. Ba is saying, yes, it is necessary to have internet to listen to BBC Radio. I used to listen to test cricket commentary on BBC Radio 5. Yeah, okay, thank you for uh, uh, clarifying this. So yeah, if you need the internet to listen to BBC Radio, then do get some internet on your phone so you can actually access BBC Radio and listen to it as much as you can, especially during your spare times or when you have, or especially during your spare time or when you travel. Instead of listening to music or songs, it's actually to use the time for more productive or in a more productive way, things that will actually get you somewhere. Okay, all right. Joshua Raman is saying, yes, I understand you everyone. Thank you. That's actually a relief, you know, because uh, many a time I am quite confused uh, and I, it really bothers me when I think of that if I'm making enough sense or if I'm speaking too fast or if my grammar is fine or not. So such assurances really make me feel good. So thank you once again, Ashikur. All right, Saladin Rana is here saying, so, what time is it you send the assessment on Friday? 
All right. You may get it tomorrow or you may get it on Friday, but whenever you get it, you will get it. Okay, I really cannot uh, tell you the time of it uh, now. Okay. Ninja Moon is here saying 100% right, sir. If I propose someone to continue conversation in English unexpectedly, they quit chatting with me. Yeah, that happens. That's, you know, I've always tried to speak in English with my sister, but doesn't didn't really work. It's because you're all you're always so you, we stay casual with our friends and family members, and it's it's even quite funny at times trying to do something that is that that we don't otherwise do. But then again. Uh, determination should take precedence or should supersede everything else. So if you're determined enough to do something well, you have to dedicate yourself 100% to it. And learning English takes a lot of dedication or being flawless or near to flawless in English needs a lot of dedication, right? Okay, all the best. Okay, uh, can you explain a short idea about phrases, uh, such as noun phrase and adverbial phrases? Well, phrases in general are a group of words, okay? A phrase is actually a group of words. Now, in a phrase, you don't have a subject and you don't have a corresponding verb. You understand? Like in a clause. In a clause, we have a subject and a verb, such as if I say, uh, I want to talk to you or I like chocolates. Take this into consideration. If I say, I like chocolates, this sentence, this is a complete sentence, and this, this is actually a clause, an independent clause, but a phrase would be without a subject, such as maybe, for example, likes chocolates, this part, just this part, maybe just a phrase. Yeah, you follow? But yes, there are many other categories of phrases, which we have not looked into, uh, in this course, but like I said, if we get a chance, inshallah, in the distant future or in the near future, we will uh, get deeper into it, inshallah. Okay. Tanjil offers Alisa is here saying, Sir, just to let you know, you are one of the finest English language teachers I have ever had, not even during my O-levels. But thank you for all the efforts that you have made for us and special, and special thanks to Automatics for offering us such a humble trainer. I will always be grateful to Automatics. Well, what can I say to that? It's my lucky day that I'm, uh, you know, I'm coming across such wonderful remarks from all of you. So thank you, thank you, and thank you once again, uh, Alise, for such a wonderful remark. I just try to do something uh, that could or that may offer some help to someone. That's it. In the hope that I will also be offered uh, such help when I need such help. So if I have helped you, then all my effort, uh, all my efforts have been successful. So Alhamdulillah once again, and thank you for making such a wonderful remark. Okay, Ninza Moon is here saying, I don't att attend the medical course. Well, you should. I, I think things that you're very much interested in getting into automatics, right? If you really want to, then of course you have to pay very good attention to our uh, language of medicine course. So please do take uh, take the course seriously. And it is an important course and it is actually designed very e in, a, in a very easy manner. And we have this, uh, we, uh, you know, Farzan Apu trains you, right? And she is a remarkable uh, trainer and she's a great doctor. So do listen to her and do follow the course and you will definitely learn a lot, uh, learn many things that you don't know now, but you will once you take part, when, once you participate in that course, okay? Okay, we have Salah Dinwana saying, I have been reading Guardian, the US version, since 2018. It helps, of course. It, uh, it's supposed to help because Guardian is a very good uh, issue. So keep reading it. And yeah, so keep reading it. And uh, there are many Bangladeshi, Bangladeshi uh, English newspapers as well. You could subscribe to any one of them as well if you like. But yeah, Guardian definitely helps. So keep up the great work. Dustin Busher is here saying, sir, can you please help me with the concept of zero clauses, first clauses, and second clauses? Do you mean to say conditionals? Zero conditionals, first conditionals, and second conditionals? Because if you're asking about zero conditionals, first conditionals, and second conditionals, then definitely I can help you out with that because I do have the slides right here with me. So I'll take you there. Just a moment.
Okay, here we go. Conditional sentences are statements discussing known factors or hypothetical situations and there are consequences. Complete conditional sentences contain a conditional clause, often referred to as the if clause and the consequence. Consider the following sentences. If a certain condition is true, then a particular result happens. I would travel around the world if I won the lottery. When water reaches 100 degrees, it boils. Okay. What are the different types of conditional sentences? There are four different types of conditional sentences in English. Each expresses a different degree of probability that a situation will occur or would have occurred under certain circumstances. Zero conditional sentences, first conditional sentences, second conditional sentences, third conditional sentences. How to use zero conditional sentences? Zero conditional sentences, all right, here we go. This slide is, uh, this is quite important for you, Dustin. Let's pay attention to this. Zero conditional sentences express general truths. Zero conditional sentences express general truths. Situations in which one thing always causes uh, another. When you use a zero conditional, you're talking about a general truth rather than a specific instance of something. Consider the following examples. If you don't brush your teeth, you get cavities. When people smoke cigarettes, their health suffers. There are a couple of things to take note of uh, in the above sentences in which the zero conditional is used. First, when using the zero conditional, the correct tense to use in both clauses is the simple present tense. A common mistake is to use the simple future tense, such as when people smoke cigarettes, their health will suffer. This is incorrect. Okay. Secondly, notice that the words if and when can be used interchangeably in these zero conditional sentences. This is because the outcome will always be the same. So it doesn't matter if or when it happens. Okay. Now, let's try to pay some attention here. You see, so what do we understand about zero conditional sentences? When do we really use uh, the zero conditional in our sentences? When we want to talk about general truths, right? Certain facts that are always true, that are universally true, such as the sun rises in the east or, the, or man is mortal. These are general universal truths. Now, you may need the zero conditional uh, to talk about such universal truths, such as if you don't brush your teeth, you get cavities. Follow this. Here you have an if clause and you have your main clause. Now, both these clauses are in the simple present tense. So when you use the zero conditional, remember to keep both your clauses in the simple present tense, such as if you don't brush your teeth. So you don't brush your teeth. This part of the sentence or this particular clause is in the simple present tense, right? So if you don't brush your teeth, what's the main clause? If this doesn't happen, what doesn't happen? Or what happens when this doesn't happen? You get cavities. You get cavities. This part, this main clause, uh, is also in the simple present tense. Likewise, take a look at the second example. When people smoke cigarettes, their health suffers. When people smoke cigarettes, their health suffers. Here again, the if clause, which is no more with the if, but with a when. Again, imposing a condition, right? So when people smoke cigarettes, their health suffers. So when people smoke cigarettes, so you omit when, and what do you find? You have people smoke cigarettes. So people smoke again, this part is in the simple present tense. So when people smoke cigarettes, their health suffers. The latter part or the main clause of the sentence, their health suffers is also in the simple present tense. So when people smoke cigarettes, their health suffers. You see? So in zero conditional sentences, your clauses are always in the simple present tense. Are we clear? I hope so. Okay, now moving on to the first conditional, uh, moving on to how to use first conditional sentences, what we have here. First conditional sentences are used to express situations in which the outcome is likely but not guaranteed to happen in the future. Follow this. First conditional sentences are used to express situations in which the outcome is likely, not just likely, but very likely. However, the, that very outcome is just not guaranteed, but very likely to happen in the future. So how do we use or how do we put such uh, or how do we construct first conditional sentences? The conditional part or the conditional clause is kept 
in the simple present tense, whereas the main clause is kept in the simple future tense. Like in the first example, if you rest, you will feel better. If you rest, you will feel better. If you set your mind to a goal, you will eventually achieve it. If you rest, sorry, if you set your mind to a goal, you will eventually achieve it. You see? So if you rest, you will feel better. Take a look at this sentence over here. The conditional part where you have the if and which is the if clause. Uh, this if clause is in the simple present tense. If you rest. If, what do you find? You rest. Simple present tense, right? So if you rest, the main clause is in the simple future tense. You will feel better. Will feel. So you will feel better. If you set your mind to a goal, you will eventually achieve it. If you set your mind to a goal, you will eventually achieve it. Note that we use the simple present tense in the if clause and simple future tense in the main clause. That is the clause that expresses the likely outcome. This is how we indicate that under a certain condition is expressed in the if clause, a specific result would likely happen in the future. I'll read this out again for you. Note that we use the simple present tense in the if clause and simple future tense in the main clause. That is the clause that expresses the likely outcome. So the clause that expresses the likely outcome or the outcome of the condition is said or expressed in the simple future tense, whereas the conditional clause or the dependent clause or the if clause is said or expressed uh, in the simple present tense. So this is how we indicate that under a certain condition, as expressed in the if clause, a specific result will likely happen in the future. Are we clear? Hopefully. So let me know, Dustin, uh, if I have been able to clarify your confusions regarding zero conditional sentences and first conditional sentences. Going back to some more questions, here we have something from Sharafat Afridi saying, would you mind explaining a little the word let's up, except imperative sentence, is there any use in other types of sentences? I'm having a hard time using this word, so well, let. Let's just take it in a very simple way. What do we understand when we say let? For example, let's go or let's do it. So what is let's? Let's is the contraction of let us, right? So in a way, the word let actually means allow. Yeah? Let him do it. Follow this. When you say let him do it, what do you mean? Allow him to do it. Let her go there. Allow her to go there. But then it is not just as similar to allow. It is just not as similar or it is just not similar or the same uh, as allow. It could have other meanings as well, such as uh, in a way it is similar to allow. But then again, if you say let's do it, does it really mean allow us to do it? No, let's do it means let's just do it, meaning shall we, we are going to do it. Yeah, so it is a confusing word, yes, but try to take it as simply as possible to think of it as allowing something or a word that is similar uh, to, to, to words such as allow. So let him do it, meaning permit him or allow him to do it. Okay, take it seriously. Don't, don't dive into the deeper complications of this word. I know there are many words that are not easily comprehensible, such as Latin and many other certain words uh, that uh, are not really coming to my head right now. But if you find difficulty with a particular word and if it's really not easy for you, avoid it or replace it with some other word. Yeah, avoid the word if you can. Okay. Names Amoni here is saying, I have problems with linking verb and phrasal verbs. Sorry, I need a short idea about how they perform in sentences. Phrasal verbs. Now, phrasal verbs is a completely different chapter. But linking verbs is, of course, those verbs that link, that link the subject with what the subject does. Such as, for example, uh, or to, to what the subject does or to what the subject is. Such as, for example, if I say to you that I am an English language trainer. I am an English language trainer. So can you find out the linking verb here? The linking verb here is am, because am is linking me or linking the pronoun I with what I is. What is I here in the sentence? I am an English language trainer. So I is connected to the English language trainer with the, help, with the linking verb am. Okay, so am is a linking verb or that is a beautiful flower. That is a beautiful flower. When you say that, again, which is the linking verb here? is okay so yeah there you go 
All right. So do we have any other questions? Another question, what is the difference between reflexive and intensive pronouns? Okay, let's get to the chapter on pronouns in that case. Here you go. Reflexive and intensive pronouns. Take a look at this slide here. What are reflexive pronouns? Reflexive pronouns are used to denote that the subject and the object of an action or a verb are the same person or thing. They end in either uh, S-E-L-F, self, or S-E-L-V-E-S, selves. Some common reflexive pronouns are myself, yourself, himself, herself, itself, ourselves, yourselves, and themselves. Examples, I was talking to myself. I was talking to myself. You must do it yourself. He congratulated himself for his own bravado. She loves herself too much to do herself any harm. So when do you exactly use reflexive pronouns? You use reflexive pronouns when you want to make sure or when you want to express that the taker of an action and the receiver of that action are the same person or are the same entity, such as, take a look at the first example here. I was talking to myself. I was talking to myself. Who was I talking to? So I did an action. I took an action here, the action of talking. Now, who was I talking to? Who was receiving this action from me? No one. It was no one but me, right? So I say, I was talking to myself not I was talking to me. Using me here would be wrong. Follow? We use me when someone else gives something to me, not myself, right? But I say myself when I myself am on the receiving end of an action that I myself took, right? So I was talking to myself here. This is an example uh, of how you should use reflexive pronouns. He congratulated himself for his own bravado. So this person did something great, did something brave, and he's congratulating himself. This congratulations was not given to him by someone else, but rather he congratulated, uh, he congratulated himself. So the action of congratulating was received by the very person who made this congratulation, or who said congratulations, or who, or who congratulated. You see? So the person doing it and receiving it are the same. So you use a reflexive pronoun when you have the uh, doer of the action, the receiver of that action, uh, when, you, when both the doer and the receiver of an action are the same person. You follow? Yeah, that is what reflexive pronouns are. And what about intensive pronouns? Intensive pronouns are the same as reflexive pronouns, but they are used to add emphasis or intensify the subject in a sentence. I built this entire house myself. Did you yourself see Gordon stealing? He finished the project all by himself. She does the household chores all by herself. So when do you, or when do we use intensive pronouns? We use intensive pronouns when we want to put a special emphasis on the doer of the subject. A special emphasis by saying that that person himself or herself has done something. An easy way of understanding it, uh, understanding this, is thinking that, uh, let's just say, I'm supposed to do a project, yeah? Just imagine, I'm supposed to do a project, right? Or maybe an assignment. And this is supposed to be a group assignment. Think about it. Imagine that I'm supposed to be part of a group assignment. And I'm supposed to have, uh, I'm supposed to receive help from five other team members, right? From five other team members. But now, the other team members are not helping me. The other team members are not helping me. So I'm going to have to do the project all by myself. And when I'm done, I can say I myself did this project, or I myself have done this project. So when I say myself here in this case, I'm putting emphasis on the fact that it was only me and me alone who did this work. It was only I and I alone who did this work. 
Okay, so this is an intensive pronoun, intensifying your uh, pronoun here. Okay, that's the difference between reflexive and intensive. Reflexive is when the action is directed back to the person who has initiated the action. And intensive is when you want to focus on that very person saying that that person was the very person, was the only person who has done something all by that person himself or herself. Okay. All right. So thank you so much for all such wonderful queries and, and wonderful remarks. I am fortunate to have, to have been here with all of you. Uh, this journey has been very uh, enlightening for me as well, as I have already said. So thank you. Thank you so much for being here. And hopefully, inshallah, in the near future, we will come to meet again, inshallah. And wait for the, uh, the course and the assessment. I will send, I will email each of you the course and assessment uh, either tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. And I wish, you, I wish all of you a very warm uh, Eid, and I hope all of you are going to enjoy. But yes, make sure in the process, all of you stay safe and stay healthy and stay and maintain your personal hygiene. Okay? So until then, or until next time, Assalamu alaikum and Allah Hafiz.